Hello, my fellow Spearites. I'm your host, Mr. Mokolova, and welcome back to TNO, in which, if you would like to read about Evox Axin, please go right ahead. I'm far from finished. Hey, big daddy. Far from finished. In which, right now, we are currently doing the For Us National Focus. And where's that? Uh, that's the uh, uh, army stuff over here. Oh, yes, For Us. Germany now finds itself firmly at the top of the European economic sphere. Thanks to the Zolverheim and her newly expanded liquid reserves. The debates within the Reichstag and the Big Daddy Albert's cabinet on what to do with them grow louder by the day, but I think I have a practical answer in mind. It is only logical, though admittedly not fair at all, to invest this German wealth back into Germany itself. For all of our progress, we're still a nation rebuilding from ruin in years of depression. As Europe's largest economy, what benefits us will directly benefit our economic partners, not as readily appreciable as just giving them money, but the logic is sound. Handouts can only do so much, and the Zolverine member states must come to stand on their own two feet someday. The surplus wealth we have gained in the course of Erhard's reforms will be invested back into Germany, increasing our GDP growth, and then made in Deutschland. I always knew we would succeed. Only a cynic or one who doesn't understand economics would ever have objected to the measures undertaken by my ministry. And objections there were from the party, full, full of small-minded men, and from the cartels, blood of the blood-soaked profits of uh, <clears throat> involuntary workers or unpaid interns. Now they are silent. Germany rises. A great Lazarus shaking off the ashes of the pirate was consigned to by its own foolish leaders. The shackles of that S-word lie shattered, not by the senseless violence of the revolution, but by the precisely aimed hammer of economics backed by Christian virtue in that old German spirit made in Germany is no longer a mock of shame but one of quality. Quality that comes from free labor, fairly paid for. Quality that would be, become the new standard for Europe. Such are the fruits of freedom, of sound economic policy, and of European friendship. May it be so forevermore, my friends. Since last time we have now, well, last time we almost got there, but now we've fully dismantled AG Farben. Uh, I wish you could, you know, even though, uh, a funny proposal. Oh. Okay, if you want to read about this, please go ahead. This was from the operation we did at the end of the last episode, so how quickly the Yanks betray their allies. I, Even though we got rid of, like, the cartel's influence, I wish we could just cut down these, these involuntary workers just more. Like, I just wish we could just cut down on it. Like, I just want to get rid of it. But right now, we're quite neutral. Quite neutral. Um, anything else here really super important? No, we're improving ourselves as best as we possibly can. We can do that stuff, because why not? Um, anything for Russia? Oh, Morgenzon. Well, if you want to know about that, please go right ahead. Yeah, it's about Thailand. Pretty good. Pretty nice. And the Middle East was on fire. But honestly, it doesn't really matter. IG5 and dismantled. If you want to know about that, please go right ahead. The dude's plotting something, which is not good, but we get so much pee, pee Wow. That's a lot of pee, pee yeah. That's just so much pee, pee But up next. So let's focus on what we've done. So we've done all the army stuff. We have some comms to go through as well. Uh, we've done all that stuff. If, uh, if you want to know about Made in Germany, please go right ahead. We've done all this stuff up here. There is a gang that must be tended to, traced to by its fear. Yeah. Um, yes, I believe I've already read them before, so if you want to do that, please go ahead. Made in Germany. Less ideology drift defense and more foreign trade payments. Foreign trade payments? Huh. Yes. Uh, very cool. Now, I'm going to say this for the last, like I said, I'm going to just use cons commands, but I want to get through as much as we possibly can fairly first. So, in Authority Relations, I believe I read this yesterday, so if you want to do this, please go right ahead, so... Uh, the reformers cause benefits, which is nice, but let's read about the, the Japanese, the land of the su rising sun. Though we've accepted Schmidt's plan of mainly favoring relations with the U.S., if we can manage to charm the Japanese into lowering hostilities with us, it's another possible avenue of profit that could be funneled into the Reich. It may help them too, but what's a war without a dose of real politics? We'll have some minor concerns to deal with about what the U.S. feels on us attempting to spark diplomacy with the Japanese, meaning we cannot go all out on our efforts. But we can still make significant efforts. There are still two main things to deal with. Removing trade barriers and negotiating the reduction of sanctions. Now let's get down to business. To defeat the Huns. Cool. And I got eight days left. And right now I'm converting even more military factories to civilian factories just because we want more cities. And our deficit is just 81 billion. 82 billion. And you know, that's okay. Oh my god, that's so much. Civilian spending, what? It's because of universal healthcare. Healthcare is expensive. Uh, Subsidized so higher education, which is okay. Social services, okay. Pensions, it costs a lot. And generous unemployment or generous employment. Wait, generous employment subsidies? Wait, is that generous employ? Hmm. Shouldn't it be unemployment? Well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's the un the employment one too, but still, expensive. Very expensive. Hopefully, it's well worth it. Let's hope it is. Erhard hasn't proven us wrong yet. 
But assess their worth. The Japanese economy is truly massive, ruling almost the entire East Asia under their grasp. The potential for growth seems almost unlimited. First, however, we must cover a few bases. The Reich will begin organizing diplomats to Tokyo, and we'll see if the Japanese government is at all interested in reciprocating any deals we might make with them. Not only that, we must make sure that there is something that we can give in exchange for what Japan can give to us. No deal between superpowers is completely one-sided after all, even if we wish it were. While we're at it, after witnessing Schmidt's arduous work of restoring relations and trade with the U.S., Eha was rather surprised to see the memo he had received from Schmidt. All it said was, write report on economic benefits of detente with Japan, despite the huge effort that had gone into preventing the U.S. at the expense, or the expense of relations with the Japanese. Eha had, had to admit that for once, Schmidt was onto something. What do the Japanese have to offer? Their economy! The Reich must meet its needs, and we have approached the Japanese with an offer to begin importing into our country. Shockingly enough, they have been eager about the proposition. It didn't take very long for both parties to reach an agreement. It seems like importing into the Einheit spec would be a major boon to them, and while that does not necessarily work in our favor, it's also a boon for us. We must now continue expanding this deal to completion. All sanctions for their goods. Even more potential. Come in, Erhard. Called Speer. I don't have time to read through your report right now, but would you be able to briefly sum it up for me? A scowl quickly formed in Erhard's face. Why bother with a Don report if he's not going to even read it? Allowing Japanese goods and investment into our economy would be generally beneficial to Germany if we sign a treaty with Japan overall. I'd say with Japan would be a prudent move. Excellent. I suppose I'll get Schmidt to engage with Japanese to begin negotiations for a limited deal. Thank you for your report. Do what you like. Schmidt, I have another mission for you. Encourage investors? Ah, yes, it's good. Encourage investors because we get more conservative side and more cities. With Schmidt on the gang's reforms, having brought Germany back from the brink and now chugging along with a remarkable efficiency, many Japanese businessmen and corporations have taken a keen interest in a growing business, or in our own businesses. With some elbow grease and negotiations, a significant number of these Japanese interests will be allowed into Germany proper, investing into our own industry with the promise that they will receive a healthy return on investment. As a consequence, this should electrify life back into the small and medium-sized businesses in Deutschland, and companies in other nations in the Einheit Pact. Yes. Uh oh Ah, yes, parts of the Far East are reuniting. German jobs for German people. Look at that. Initial results have turned up a success. With Japanese funds coming into Germany, numerous businesses, big and small, received significant cash injections, revitalizing them and encouraging them to hire more workers. This has had an almost rippling effect across Germany, and while it isn't a major increase, it's still a boost for growth. Advertising imports. Perhaps it is on the more expensive side, but what does it matter? The German citizen is no longer forced to handpick what is only made in Einheitspact, a fact that many are clearly discontent with. Instead, their selections have begun to open up for a new foreign perspective. Or perspective. Goods tended to be high quality are pouring into Germany, and there's been a noticeable uptick in satisfaction from the civilian populace. With a wide variety of goods to spend, there will be a bigger incentive to spend the uh, income, so the economy shall continue to grow. New trade imbalances with the old Japanese will cost us $50 million. $50 million is nothing. If it's $50 billion, then that's seriously something, but 50 million, we're okay with that. Totally, totally, totally okay. Ah, uh, yes, balance as all things should be. It must be in balance. A competitive market. The effect of the Japanese market opening up to the German markets is in full effect now. Shelves are filled with products that have origins from all around East Asia, often being more expensive and higher quality than our German counterparts. This has pleased our citizens quite handily. But now there's a question we must ask ourselves. Do we want to be outcompeted by a superpower in our own lands? Though these profits are flowing, we don't need them to run our own businesses into the ground. The answer will reveal itself in the future, as it's too late to back out now. And I just realized the oil crisis here. It is July that it happens. Okay, that sucks. Oh my gosh. Okay, so everything's going to collapse now. We have a lot of people. I mean, I wish we could spend our PP more on more stuff. Like, I don't mind spending your PP. And like I said yesterday, it hurts when your PP hurts. It's not good when your PP hurts, but like, we got a lot of PP. We got a lot of growth. Please don't. Please. No. No. Ah. All right. Any second now, things are going to get really good. Actually, can we help you out down here? Um, yeah, we can actually. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you guys are down here. How many guys can we send? 20! Well, the vast majority of these guys are going to go home, so... That sucks. Cool. Alright, guys. Good luck. Um, yeah. Oh, so, one of the comments from yesterday was that someone says that I, that he or she thinks that uh, the military tree needs... For the focus tree should maybe get reworked at some point. It probably will. And I kind of agree with that just because a lot of these... You have options. You have decisions to take. Now, with Italy and Japan, we sort of do, sort of don't, at least with the Japanese... But with these guys, we don't. Or with the Italians, which kind of sucks. Um, we have, I mean, just because we're trying to strike a middle ground, you can either go full reformist or just fully, just radically conservative. There's a lot of options that you can take. Like, even over here, like, you want to be more reformist, you want to be more conservative. The military tree, while it does have some nice things about it, I especially like the idea 
or Wehrmacht reforms with the Air Force, the Luftwaffe, and the Kriegsmarine. But the Army branch, I kind of agree, just because there, there's two options. I mean, wish, I, or at least I wish there were two options. One with Shona, one with Speidel, one which maybe maintains, or maybe three ways. So you might be want to cut down and reform the, ver the hair so that it's small like what we have right now. One that just keeps it at the current size, or even another one that bloats it up, be really inefficient of course, but bloats it up and makes it just even larger. I want more options for like true, for a truly reformist or a truly conservative uh, like Wehrmacht. I would love to see that. So, I don't know, that's just me. I, I, I agree with whoever said that, and actually a few people said that too, so. I like having options. I'm a guy who likes to have lots and lots of options, but uh, things are just going to fall apart here. Please, please don't. Oh, odds and ends. Oh, no. Nothing good can come out of this. Oh, um, I, oh boy. So, uh, odds and ends. The shelves of groceries, markets, and specialty stores have lately been lined with new and exciting products from the U.S. and Japan alike. Foods and drinks such as Guyanese bananas, American sodas, and Japanese seafood are providing tasty new meals for families and allowing all sorts of new extra restaurants to pop up with Barbie, Barbies, Etch-a-Sketches, and action figures. Cartoons on a, an ahead of its time Japanese adventure called Video Home System. Fill toy and novelty stores that provide hours upon hours of new entertainment for German children and adults alike. Perhaps the most popular facet of the new imported product craze is of foreign electronics. TVs, portable radios, home... Uh, home phones, coffee makers, power tools and electric mixers, blenders, modern stovetops, microwave ovens, electric toothbrushes, digital alarm clocks, hair dryers, Polaroid cameras, electric razors, air conditioning units, washer dryers, vacuum cleaners, and all sorts of other goods can now be found in practically every middle class German household. All these brand new products have caused Germany's consumers to come out and buy everything they can. Open trade with the US and Japan has brought a new econ economic and cultural era for Germany and there's no going back. Finally, something to spend the money on other than Fanta. I don't know if this is going to change the focus. I hope it... Black gold, red sand. We're going to get involved in there. Um, okay, so as soon as it says it's going to change the focus tree, we're going to go and use Collins commands and get all the other focuses done because I want to see actually what they're all like. Please don't do it yet. Please don't do it yet. Please don't do it yet. we got stuff to do here. So, may the money flow. Perhaps one thing that the reformers and the conservatives both share in common is that they care about the well-being of the average German citizen. I wrote, incredibly, with us loosening our sanctions with Japan, this has led to an increase in the standard of living, and even if we're interacting with a superpower that was previously almost hostile to us, no click in the NSDAP, it seems to be making the progress that we're making. Business is booming. Oh, what's up, Morgenson? If you want to that, please go ahead. With some increased mission success chance? Um, I mean, if you're above 100%, I'm not sure how you can really do that, but great, great. So East Asia is done, Oceania is done, Southeast Asia is done, Russia is done, Africa has nothing there, Middle East has nothing there. Us, we have nothing here as well. South America, no. Mexico and Central America, no. All right. Spa Hedler, if you want to about that, please go ahead. Thank you. Choking on, oh crap, here it goes. Choking on black gold. So, God help the right, the oil certainly won't help. The economy will be collapsing. Social upheaval. Um... A new regime stability goes by 30%. So new options on the focus tree. So that's going to go ahead and basically ruin what we have right now. So, yeah. That's not good. We have 100% regime stability, which is fine with us. So we're really quite middle ground. Let's get this focus done first. Increase our political power gain by 0 0.05 and stability by 5%. Alright, so now that that is done, let's see. Japanese import looks pretty good. So with that in mind, uh, I'm just going to use FA. There you go. Focus autocomplete. So made the money flow. And I'm going to read the ones I've never read before. So we got that one done. And I'd love... And just, I want to get through everything here. I want to see what these focuses are like. But are sanctions. Nothing comes for free. As much as the Japanese have no issue loosening sanctions on us, they expect our end of the bargain to be filled. German goods are craved in Tokyo and the other metro, uh, metro policies of Japan, as well as abroad in the co-prosperity sphere as a whole. We must make a choice, and there are two ways to go about this. The first is to assure the Americans that this will be a nominal decrease in sanctions. After all, we d first decided to venture into Capitol Hill and be friends with the U.S. No need risk looking, looking like we're stabbing them in the back. The second is to make the Americans listen to reason. Everyone can benefit from trading with each other, and there's no reason we cannot trade with the Japanese just as well as we can with the Americans. This will displease the U.S. government and make us seem somewhat aloof, but nothing ventured, nothing gained, no? Cool. So, we will be reduced for all. We need more stability for this. Assure the Americans. But we'll favor Washington. Draw up levies. Um, honestly, I don't like either ones. I want to see what happens for this. We'll be reduced for all. Uh, let's do this side, just because we do get more out of this, I think. I want to see what the event is for that, because we don't get an event for this one, so. We'll be reduced for all. Uh, if you want to read about this one, please go ahead, as well as drop levies, so. It is what it is. 
The men in DC are unhappy with this outcome, and it will take some political legwork to convince them that no, we're not turning our backs on them. We're merely pragmatically expanding our business opportunities. This way, there will be a slightest hit to relationships or relationships with Americans, while we'll bring ourselves closer to Japan, for better or for worse. Assure the Americans. We'll have to send Schmidt back in to reassure the Americans that we all shall remain trading partners with them. He will have to speak in detail with the U.S. ambassador and raise any doubts about our deal. Once that is settled, the path forward should be clear. We can finally get around to writing the deal with Japan. Soon enough, German goods will stock both American and Japanese supermarkets, and we'll profit prosper all the more from both. Some slight reassurance. Oh, I don't believe I was expecting a phone call from you, Mr. Ambassador. Would you like to discuss? For Minister Schmidt, it's a pleasure to speak with you again. Of course, I'm just calling on behalf of the American Executive Branch to relay certain concerns we have. Please go right ahead, the American Ambassador to Germany clearly his throat. <clears throat> it's impossible not to notice that Germany has also begun trading with the Empire of Japan. Though the U.S. and Germany have now become economic partners, we're incredibly aware of any cooperation with the Japanese. We'd simply like you to reaffirm that you're not forging any of our pre-existing agreements, and that you're not giving any special or preferable treatment to the Japanese. Oh, is that what this is about? You can tell my friends in the White House that they have absolutely nothing to worry about. Our new administration is simply opening up the Reich again to all sorts of foreign partnership opportunities. A journey of isolation and conquest is no more, and that's all there is to it, Ambassador. Schmidt felt genuine pride in being able to say that Germany was truly on a path of change. I figure, but I want to hear it from the horses of mouth so I can relay that to my superiors, so thank you for that. Have a nice evening, Poland Minister. Things are actually going well, but write the agreements. Germany and Japan have never been friends with each other, being only allies out of convenience at best today, however. Marks a special day. A form of detente has been achieved, with our own sanctions being lessened against Japan. Now that we can finally strike a deal, it should mean that our relations will begin a slow, slow thaw. It's not much, but it's better than open hatred, and should ease our government's worries as well as domestic concerns. Down to business. Our efforts to approach the Japanese with a trade agreement have proven fruitful. Ending the embargo between the German Reich and the Empire of Japan and, uh, has a lot of potential to aid the development of our economy. However, we still need to iron out the Pacific tariffs we shall levy on Japanese imports. On one hand, lower tariffs mean that we will see less benefit from trading, however. How lower tariffs mean more Japanese goods will compete with established German firms, which could be destabilizing to the market. Get Eha on the line. So with that one done, I, I technically read through all this stuff, so if you want to read these ones, I'm just going to do this one as well. So if you want to buy that, please go ahead, as well as First in Trade, and the Toronto Accords. Now, I've done Land of the Free, so if you want to read that one again, please go right ahead, as well as a House Divided, and a Strange Meeting, please go right ahead, you know, all that stuff. But we'll do Home of the Brave. As a way to further increase our relationship with the U.S., Helmut Schmidt has proposed a tour of the East Coast, during which you'll meet and fraternize with the higher echelons of American politics and government. This should help us achieve further benefits from our new partners. The fear has agreed to the proposal, but with a limit. As many landmarks within the former 13 colonies have a deeper meaning than the outer appearance, it would be best to avoid anything which may irk the conservatives at home, after all, he argues. We are already making sweeping reforms, and it would be unwise to force our hand when we are still recovering from a civil war. Oh. Yeah, the Toronto Accord ends. Okay, cool. That Grand Old Republic. As agreed upon, Rex Minister Schmidt has begun his tour of the most important landmarks in the East Coast, starting from Washington, D.C. itself. However, he'll refrain from visiting monuments dedicated to happenings and people which should would stand in stark contrast to what we are still doing within our homeland. As such, while visits to the Capitol and White House, as well as the Pentagon, are scheduled, he will stay clear of the Lincoln Memorial and the commemorative pl plaques to those who died to free the slaves. This may not sit well with his reformist spirit, but we will have to, until we have fully abolished slavery, it would be rather controversial to be shown next to Lincoln's statue. What? He was okay with slavery as long as he got the southern states back. This old house. Finally, the great moment has come. After a formal dinner held at the White House, our minister will sign the treaty with which fully lifts the embargo and officially inaugurate this new age of cooperation between our two countries. In the following talks, we expect new trade deals to be signed, which will be a boon to our economy and further aid us in rebuilding our country from the destruction of the Civil War. So are we still feeling the effects of the Civil War? I mean, it lasts until like 64 or something, so it's only been like six years, so sort of, I guess. Schmidt meets the president. We'll give peace a chance. And if you wonder about Future Perfect, please go ahead. With the embargo lifted against us lifted, the Reich can finally enjoy the filling of our coffers with American investments. Surely, the Reich's economy shall continue to blossom. Cool. Um, I just want to get through all these focuses before we have to switch trees. I just want to. Um, so basically, everything else I've read here, so I will give you the option to read if you like to read about this stuff. So basically, uh, lagging behind, here we go. I'm sorry, my fear, but it's too dark to read. Uh, Deutsch Forschungsgemeinschaft. Cool. Needs of the consumers. Nice. Get even more people they don't need. Needs of the builders. Nice. Needs of the producers. From the KWG. Very, very good. Support the universities. Yes, academic base goes up. Supremacy or bust. We love supremacy. We love supremacy and race here. Establish a Reichsamt for Militär Forschung. Nice. Salvage Wunderwaffe designs. Yes, yes, yes. Hiring spree. Honestly, there's not a whole lot here that... For overall, like... Um, for this entire focus, we got through most of the stuff here. Oh, we can't do that one. Um, you know what? Screw it. Focus dot... 
no checks. I just want to get through all this stuff. I, I really do. Like, I, I at, by the end of this campaign, I'm going to know Spare so well that I won't ever want to play him again. <laughs> so there's all that stuff. And then bring Nestorom online, of course. So, cool. And let's get rid of that. Uh, there you go. Cool. Nestorom comes to life. Very cool. A great day for Germany. The future's now. I know, I know this is just cheating, but, like, it's TNO. But choking on black gold. Now, the Frankfurt stock market crash emits oil crisis. Let's take a look at the economy. Mmm. Mmm, that's a big, that's a big number. But with no growth. Oh, good God. Oh, yeah, no oil crisis. So, um, this is going to, the social status is going to go down regardless, so. We're somewhat reformist too right now, so that's interesting. Um, anything else here, really? Oh, uh, that stuff is okay. Alright, so what do we have now? Achilles heel struck. I'm pretty sure about this one. So this is what I really want to do. Like I did the Gang of Four. We do oh, the Four's vision. We can do the Fear's will or oh, the Pyrrhides might. Always false. Uh, so I'm going to go choosing both of these sides. So if you want to read about Achilles heel and struck, please go ahead. But it's all going to idle bypass anyways. The heart bleeds. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. Cool. Uh, I don't think there's anything we can really do uh, for this stuff. I mean, if things are collapsing. I'm not sure how much is going to really affect us. Uh, but we can't do anything here yet, so. It is what it is. There's quite literally nothing we can do. I mean, tariffs on commodities. First comes a matter of consumer goods. Reducing tariffs would lower the price of exotic Japanese goods and allow more Germans to purchase them. Being able to use their incomes on more than Fanto will no doubt make them happier with the regime allowing us to receive more political support from the citizenry of the Reich. However, the Reich's economy has just begun to recover. Many newly established firms are in a vulnerable position as they struggle to make a profit. Lowering tariffs too much might mean that they, many newly established German companies might not be able to compete with the lower price of the massive Japanese corporations, causing many to go bankrupt. Many companies hate having to fire their employees has the potential to be destabilizing, especially considering the short amount of time that would pass between many people being hired and fired. The happiness of the citizenry is more beneficial than protectionism. Perhaps balancing the needs of companies and the wants of the consumers is the best way. The survival of jo small German companies is more important than the cheaper Japanese goods. Uh, I'm just going to the middle one. Balancing the needs of companies and the wants of consumers is the best way. Duties on industrial goods. Next, we must contend with the issues of Japanese industrial goods on one hand. These will be of great help to Germany's many businesses. New machines will allow them to produce more goods for a lower cost. This will not only improve our production base, but also means more companies will have more money to hire more German workers. However, trade with the Japanese has the potential to be rather fickle if we allow our corporations to grow overly reliant on Japanese-made machinery, we run the risk of Tokyo holding too much power over our economy. The third of them cutting off our supply of machinery could pose a problem in the future. Nonsense. Supply of Germany, German computer companies is more important to reduce the tariffs. The struggles of the firm must be balanced with the regime's stability. Tokyo should not have a chokehold on our industry and increase the tariffs. Middle one. Levies on Japanese tech. Lastly, we must decide on how to harsher tariffs should be on Japanese technology. The Reich's academic base has been in a state of decline for the past decade. A lack of consumer industry and a bloated military industrial complex has meant that most of our research has been used on developing new weapons for the hair. Trading technology with the Japanese could allow us to study it and improve our own consumer focused innovations. However, as with industrial goods, we run the risk of growing overly reliant on Japan's technology, which would allow them to have a greater sway over the regime. Technology is too valuable to pass up, lower the tariffs. Finding the middle ground will cost, give us best, best of both worlds, or the worst of both worlds. We must limit Japanese influence as much as possible increase the tariffs. More tariffs, more tariffs. We love more tariffs. Depending on what it is. Maybe. Just keep an eye on that. Ah, this old house. Ah, she went on the East Coast. Ah, uh, Foreign Minister Schmidt and the diplomatic entourage has arrived on the East Coast and have begun a sweeping tour across many of the coastal states, from hunting in the vast woods of northern Maine, to visiting the native creative Etowah Mountains of Georgia, to touring towns, factories, and other landmarks all over the eastern seaboard. The Germans have hopefully garnered a much better understanding of American culture and livelihood. We have at the very least given the Foreign Minister a highly interesting trip, and hopefully the hospitality we've shown to the representatives of our ostensible enemies will bear fruit in the form of improved relations. Where will he visit next? Taking to the streets. Um, we won't do about that, please go ahead. Oh boy. This old house. Uh, uh, I think if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. Yeah. To last incorporation between our nations. Alright. Declare martial law. Oh, we could do that, but... I mean, it's going to fall apart anyways. But it's only going to prove. It, it gets worse, though. I'm not really sure, I'll be honest. Um, we're, pretty, we're pretty centrist right now. Uh, we could probably go reform this slightly more right now, maybe? Maybe? Um, let's do that stuff first. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to save the game. I save the game oftentimes in front of you guys, especially for these long campaigns. Just because I probably go back to this campaign. Let's go reform this for now. 
And we're going to choose one path that we'll definitely head down. Let's go to Grimestine. We got. We, I'm only doing that one just because we have a tick right here. And the tick is minus 5.62. Well, technically, we don't have to do it, though. No, it's good. We're not doing it. No, no more. We don't need any more. But if you want to read about the West Cowards, please go right ahead. Oh, with extreme prejudice. There you go. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Only violence can suppress violence. And if you want to read about the East Screams, please go right ahead as well. Yeah, that looks not very good. Yeah, that's not good. Oh, uh, we're going to close that out for now. Uh, probably going to need a little bit more regime stability, though, right? There you go. Well, that's not very good for us. Consumer goods are looking not too bad. How is this looking? We're still building a lot of... Oh, we're building a, we're building up a lot of forts. Um, that's fine. Hot bleeds. Hot wants with the well, hot wants. That's good enough for now. Um, let's go do the West Cowards first. Thank you. And keep building up more cities. Uh, you know, just economic... You know, issues at home. That's all. No worries, no worries. Don't mind us. We're just building a lot of factories here. That's all. Look how many factories I've built. How many cities I've built. And the Zolverine. This is why we reinvested the money into Germany, because I've already invested so much into our like little puppet states here. They better not rebel. That'd be really bad if they did. Red, black, and gold. All right. Go ahead, that. Please go ahead. It is what it is. Do the divisions ever arrive? I don't know why, but they're just taking forever. I don't know. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention, but like, holy crap! Please go. Please show up. It says we have an oil crest, but it doesn't look like it. Um, rate by which social tension increases every two weeks increases somewhat. Distribute propaganda. Oh, that's probably pretty good to do. 27, catastrophic, and eh, it is what it is, you know. Good, nice job, guys. There, the, there goes that part of you, Rock. Alright. Oh, wrong one. Bing. Artillery, thank you. Let them attack over a river, that's fine. Doesn't really matter to us. And then go in now, too. Children of the Grave. Oh, boy. Uh, uh, if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. I think I've heard of this one before. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a mess here, everyone. Definitely a mess. If you guys would like to go trucking on in, please go right ahead. Yeah, not great for us. Really not great. Yeah, that was a weird episode last episode where we have just like us and just trying to the whole nuclear hellfire thing. But he screams, yes, good, very good. Sometimes screaming is good for you. Maybe. I don't know. Don't pay attention to me. Hey! They died. Air bell, snake in the grass. Are you ready to grass? It's time to wipe out the brown scum! I want to actually go there and step. Okay, maybe we can't do that. Oh, Laura, you can trust. Send in the next one. Oh, do you actually have an upgrade? It's a desert fox. That's kind of cool. Uh, anything else here? Yes. Uh, Supremacy or boss. We won't ever get that one done. Stay of the Reich. How much? We're actually... Okay, it's really going really hard on reformist stuff right now. I might go conservative then. Hmm. I still don't want to do anything. No. We'll see. Mosul? Actually, we can go straight in there and finish this off. There you go. Very nice. Have a good day. Goodbye. We won. Yay! Alright, if you want to read about Vassai Mus, please go ahead. The emergency meeting commences. And there's going to be a lot of yelling, a lot of bad words, and that's okay. So, now we have about... How many slaves do we have? 12 million-ish? I think we had about 12 million when we did a full gang of four. Less than 12 million. Less than 12 million slaves still in the Reich, in the Zolverein. How are we going to do with them? Depends what, who we elect. Also, we have a lot of forts. Like, uh, I, we've just been building so much, so many forts. Look at that. Eastern Prussia, just Prussia in general, is just like fort madness over there. It's just absolute craziness. Was sein muss. Mother Russia bleeds. D time to demonstrate the failure of Spiel's methods. Ooh, Spiel had the report. Nice. Mm, 
we're still middle ground. That's good. Uh, anything else? Want to Nadlor? Sure, why not? Just gonna do probably this one and stuff like that. Well, the guys are back. How was the trip, guys? How was the trip? Nice. Supremacy your bus is nice, but basically impossible to do until T O two comes out. You can give some token political promises. Why not? And all right. So if you want to be about Musine, please go ahead. Uh, it's gonna be bad for us. You know, screw it. Since we're here, I'm gonna save again, just because we can. And uh, like I said earlier, I'm gonna go down both routes: the, the center one and the right one, just to see what they're like. So. Is it going to go well for us? Probably not, but that's okay. So just in case, how about we send all of our guys back here to Germany? And if Poland falls, then Poland falls, you know? Because Prussia is more important than Poland. You know, we have two P's. One of the P's is worth more to us than the other P. Oops. Cool. And let the tanks come over here too. Whee! Opportunism of phrase. Too beautiful, too beautiful partnership. All right. Technology at this point doesn't really matter too much, but still. Good. What to do? What to do? Start brainstorming, man. We've got a right to save. We're done with our land auction. Yes, we are. Oh, we're going to need some main battle tanks, boys and girls. We're going to blow a lot of holes in our enemies. Actually, right now, you can probably cut civvy spending. 80 billion is not bad. Cut that too. So much to do, so much little time. Not all men can be idealistic as you, Schmidt. Very nice. Fight terror with terror. We've tried nothing, we're all out of ideas. Pretty much. Yeah. Oh boy, what are we going to do about this? Um, I mean, I don't see it's the point of doing any of this, because it's it just going to go down anyways. I mean, I don't mind doing this one. We're already implement. Um, Economic, economic reform, but still. Uh, if you like to about better research facilities, please go right ahead. Uh, nice. So, if they have their shops for this, for the mega corporations, if you don't even get it done, I guess you can do it now. So, like, what's the point of doing it before then? I guess the effects of slavery and the mass movement of bodies will definitely have an effect on the economy and just, like, Zilbron in general, but still. A bit of sweet victory. Alright, the good old days. Cool. A bittersweet victory, then. What is it, Ehad? The matter is resolved. The repatriation will be stopped. No. No. That is not good. I don't like that. I really don't like that. We should not be doing that. I don't like that. I, I, I wanted an option here where we either can do that, we can continue with the current progress of getting rid of the slaves and sending them back east or wherever they came from, and or doing a middle ground where you slow it down, but you're still sending people home. I don't like doing this one. Arrgh. The wheels turn. So we got to rush through the, a lot of things here before we can do that. So we do not want to do anything that removes the days here. Crossing the Black Rubicon. Okay, so this is super important. And like normal, I'm going to save again because we can. Because I like saving the game. And you can see my save games. Look how many saves I have for Germany. So many saves. But crossing the Black Rubicon. Now, if you're wondering about that, please go ahead. So this one is the reformist side. The Gang of Force Vision. So we'll come back here in just a little bit. But the fear knows best. Or it would be foolish to not use a tool such as the NSDAP. I want to go down this right way first. I want to go down the conservative side first. And then we'll go to the centrist drop. So, all right. It would be foolish to not use a tool such as the NSDAP. The parties might. The gang may say what they want about their proposed reforms during the time of the crisis, but they are shaky at best and easily prone to further destruction of the German economy, judging by how Erhard's strict policies of liberalization had gotten them here uh, to the first place. That was not to say that Spehat was a fan of Oberländer's ilk, not at all, as is often collapsed with his much pure vision of national socialism. Still, they held vast influence over the Reich, and the Speer is certain that his charismatic nature can craft deals leaning towards his way, guaranteeing Germany's survival through this period of strife. Though there is no guarantee this will end well. Well, I mean, as we saw yesterday, we had a thermonuclear war, but not really. But the true ideology. 
Such complexities and needless frivolities that the gang has come up with ever since the meteoric rise of power Shpia's ministers have only proven themselves to fuel the fire of the brewing liberal conspiracy that considers itself righteous and its perceived war against national socialism. To this, Oberlander sees it as sheer madness, attempting to manufacture problems where none existed before him. Hitler's vision was bold and revolutionary, and it worked and worked well, with a long list of demands from the NSDAP's hardliners. Speer must now look over all of them in their demand to return back to Germany's roots, though some demands seem particularly egregious. The Fuhrer must see them particularly through in order to safeguard both his influence over the Reich and the NSDAPs. If it is curbed, the power of the gang, it has to curb the power of the gang, so be it. Alpha Speer needs only the party to bring back prosperity. So. You know what, let's launch a campaign. We're going to go conservative this time. Because, oh my gosh, it's in between. Oh, I'm glad we do it now. Oh, oh, now the reformists. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. No, 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 no. Oh, boy. Well, oh, well, whatever. Yeah, maybe that's a really bad thing to do. Listen to all the words all written down. He never should experiment anything more than with the German scum. Uh, have I read this one before? Uh, let's see what this is. Fedir's cold, thin body shuddered inside his dimly lit apartment complex. There wasn't much food to go around for him to eat, and he still hated work, but home was home. He could stare out and see the fields of his Ukraine, which brought a smile to his weary face, but he was afraid, deathly afraid. His wife and their two sons were still back in Germany, he had no idea when they would come back before winter, he hoped, if only before winter. The letter that slid under the door was something he only noticed an entire day after he arrived, whereupon he stepped and nearly slipped on it by accident. Nervousness ached from its heart when he tore open the cover and read the sloppy Polish, but it was nothing compared to the horror he felt when beginning actually to read it. I've read this one before. Mr. Fedier, um, he muttered under his breath, We deeply apologize for bringing you this sudden news, but the Reich has currently put the matter of repatriation on permanent hiatus. His sums uh, dug into the sides. How could they do this to him? To her? To the children? We hope you understand the necessity. We'll make sure their family members are taken care of. Flash. A betrayal flashed across his face, and in an instant the letter ripped in two, anger coursing throughout his system as he threw the pieces of paper against the wall. Letting out an unrestricted scream as he did so. The Germans left his father to die in a gas chamber before being a suspected communist, while his mother faced a horrible fate at the hands of rowdy Nazi soldiers. Rage consumed his mind the next hour, and he barely calmed down the rest of the day afterwards. Well, that's not good. Yeah, actually getting reforms right now is really bad. Uh, we don't want to do that one. We want to hold speech. Do that one. And to banish want. To impact? Yes. The weave of political intrigue and slow, methodical change is a poison distributed among Western liberal democracies. It is unfit to serve in the Reich, a dictatorship whereupon the Fuhrer is the will of the people and nothing less. Some may consider this an excuse to justify Judeo-Bolshevik sentiment. They, was, they would be wholly incorrect in interpreting Hitler's vision. Western individualism, tainted with degeneracy and moral degradation, has no place here. It is only the people, the collective whole, marching forward together and unison that can determine the way forward. Is that Arnold Schwarzenegger? Those who possess much must be forced to give out what they needn't, and those who possess nothing will be given their opportunity to show that they, along with all members of the German society, are worthy of living as well as the richest neighbor. In time, the Reich will move past the clutches of the decadent Jewish capitalist world economy. i definitely do that one. Yeah, that's an reform. That's extreme reformist. Wow. Yeah, maybe going conservative right now is a bad idea, but whatever. One drop in the seat. Oh, boy. Ah, uh, very good. Oberlander liked his theatrics. His meager attempts to back Speer into a situation where he'd perhaps feel fear from the man, but he felt none. In the dimly lit room, the two met. Only an hour before midnight struck, and the Rex Kent's lie mostly emptied out. Speer looked at the man with a thinly veiled disgust. Oberlander looked at him with a smile. As the representative of the most traditional and stalwart ideology of the National Socialist Regime, which has been painfully lacking ever since the Speer administration has taken hold of the country, watch your tongue, Oberlander, Speer cut in without wasting a second. Get to your point. He demanded, eyes fixated on the most minute movements that Oberlander gave. He was uncomfortable talking to Speer, but at the same time, with a nod and sigh, Oberlander continued. I can whip up the NSDAP back into shape and turn it into quite a potent tool. However, I'll need more flexibility in how I maneuver myself in the court of the Volkshalle. Your ministers have made any distinctly pro-national socialist movements rather difficult and, well, his gaze shone for of a lust of power, barely traceable as it faded moments afterwards. Not just from me, of course. Many of my allies have been bogged down too, so my demands are this. Give the NSDAP more autonomy. We can manage ourselves, and I can make sure to put our resources to good use. The details can be ironed out later. Does this sound acceptable? Speer could put together the pieces and assume well in advance what would happen if he agreed to this offer. Oberlander cared about nothing but himself and this insidious toxin known as pure Hitlerist thought. He most definitely would use whatever was given to him by to propel higher and higher up the political ladder, but in the end, he is just an yet another piece in the house of cards. And though Speer knows he's at the top, he wonders if it even matters. Well, at least we got a little more conservative support for now. Oh, look at that. Now we're conservative. Look at that now. That's nice. Okay, so them going up even higher is fine with us. Let my people go. Um, Have I read this one before? 
If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Yeah, I think I've read that one before, so. Sometimes I wish we could resort to his tactics. Well, we can go back and resort to him. Which, I think we're basically going to be doing anyway, so. It is what it is. And the Jew, their plans against us. A subtle touch, but not a letter hand. Um... Yeah, if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. Yeah. A subtler touch, but not a letter hand. Oh, military construction. I'm glad during all these riots we still have time to plan out more military factories. That's always good stuff, right? Uh, let's go read the next one. Banish West. Kaisar's... Kaisar's? Caesar's do. Not Kaisar, no. Oh, yes. The model society. I want to banish fear. Let's banish fear first. I'm going to do that one. National socialism accommodates the everyday man. It feeds him, clothes him, finds a job that he's comfortable with. It gives him a family of strong moral values, of love and care between mother and father and son and daughter. For who suffers for the mother livelihood to be paid in full by the state, a life of full, of loud abundance and comfort amongst this community? Through the degradation of the many mistakes uh, formed within the rotting structure that within the NSDAP, this knowledge has been lost in the German people. This loss of unity is un is a prevailing cause for so much of Germany's suffering during the ongoing crisis. The spirit of rebellion, bolstered by parasitic Judeo-Bolshevik causes, feeding on chaos like a mosquito would from a human blood. It must be crushed. The banners will fall again from every radio and TV. will broadcast the glory that the German people must return to and will return to. If you want to read about the Kaiser Wilhelm, Kaiser Wilhelm Gesellschaft, please go ahead. A toast to science and progress. Oh, we lost it. No! Goodbye! Hopefully this doesn't go blow up in our face. Happiness of all mankind. Um, I think I've read this one before, so... Yeah, I just, definitely read this one before. So if you want to do that, please go right ahead. To banish want. Want not, waste not. I don't know, something like that. Uh, what do we have up here? 32%. A little scary. Not gonna lie. A little scary. But hey, we got time for guns. So much for having stability here. We used to have so much more stability, man. So much more. Yeah, this is not good. Wait, so it says we're conservative. State propaganda is conservative, but the reformist takes up here. Oh, that's why we're losing so much stability. That's so stupid. That's so stupid. Uh, if I have to go back, I'll go back and have to fix things up. That's fine with me. Um, anything up here? Oh, yeah, we can do this stuff, too. Uh, economic reforms, why not? Minus 19 is not bad. Curtail public meetings. Conservative side. Ooh, costing us some regime stability. Uh, proves moderately. Give it a day before we do that. Send in the tanks. Ooh. I kind of like that. Upstart students, no good rabble rousers, and various miscreants have begun causing a fuss in the streets of the Reich. These traitorous fools march and chant their crop sludge, and worse, the people are beginning to fall forward, even joining them. This will not continue. The Reich cannot show weakness in time of strife, no matter how desperate things may become. Employ all star by term. These times of economic collapse have led to a wave of layoffs sweeping through the Reich. Worse, it has left many companies destitute, unable to run their factories or produce their goods, fortunately for them, and it so happens that we have thousands upon thousands of laborers willing to man the conveyor belts as unpaid labor. Not bad. Social tension worsens. Um, regime stability goes down. We don't want to do that. And reinforce Gleichschaltung. Oh, uh, what is this one? The oil crisis is straining the right to its limits, and the cracks are beginning to show in both the people and the party. The people protest furiously while the party bickers among itself. Both of these are unacceptable. Gleichschaltung will hold the right together in these time trying times, and those who break away will learn their lesson the hard way. There we go. Token political form promises. Not uh Nello report. Cool. Getting for the rich, but for what? Nice. Alright, what is this? Anthony Man Cuckoo's Velugo. Francis Paki Pakayaki is an eccentric man, but it cannot be denied that he's the most influential pro-German voice in the National Progressive Party, and that his all-American national vanguard represents the most nationally conscious parts of America. Although a few public officials and businessmen would ever consider it a lobby for them, our operatives in the U.S. can provide them special funding to help the fascist faction achieve their ambitious goals. Whether they can become a viable political force or not, it's important to have those Yaki's as their mouthpiece within the enemy territory. Absolutely. I should not let get, get this bad. That is bad. That is really bad for us. To banish fear. The model society. Through many of the successes of the Reich, has sadly suffered in the meantime with a tense conflict that has passed under Hitler's ever watchful eye, resulting in two cataclysms of the Second West Russian War and the German Civil War. Years after the dust has settled, however, Germany's rebounded, but many are still left to suffer. They are the most particularly vulnerable group, with those dragged behind by low income jobs and others simply living in areas devastated and not yet recovered. 
The liberal paradigm of reaching out and offering comfort comforting lives to those people of the Reich must be stopped here and now. Welfare of the Aryan man must be expanded, the light of the national socialism brought to the worse off, and in turn, in letting them to the eternal values of Hitler consolidated and set up to achieve. Those who refuse are our offer of salvation will find them aban themselves abandoned. The destiny of the Aryan does not accept cowardice and ideological emptiness. Very good. All right, so we're still here. Um, we're okay for now, but that's really bad. Uh, and okay. Um, the rate which social tension increases goes down. I want to help the uh, conservative side, but I don't want to hurt our so social tension worsens when removed. Uh, this one's, I don't want to do this one too much, but economic reforms would be nice. I like martial law. Mm. I don't want to increase the rate at which things get worse. This one's not too bad to do. Distribute propaganda, though. That's pretty good. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, boy. Uh, get more regime stability, too. Uh, I definitely want to do this one, though. So Recessive. Not bad. Um, hmm. Yeah, it's just not worth doing that one. There you go. Seven. Go. Cool. To banish fear. Ever since the crisis hit Germany, Klaus found himself out of employment. His family, consisting of his elderly mother and his clumsy brother, both unemployed, had lived off the bare necessities provided to them by the government for a few months now. Then, one day, something someone rang at the door, and Klaus was the only one available to come up and answer, and so he did. Hello? A hair, uh, hesitant voice replied, stepping to the side and showing himself to Klaus. Business suit, hat, the whole bureaucratic package. Hair, yeah. Klaus Jung? The man in question nodded, raising an eyebrow. I'm just here to inform you that the government has run a background check on your family. We're looking to rapidly begin employing the worst off members of society you see, and, uh, Hope shone through Klaus's eyes. Really? What's the results? Uh, seemingly off-put by his eagerness, the man took a moment to readjust. Well, you, Herr Klaus, have been deemed fit for a job as an electronics technician. Much like the last one you had. A grin was practically plastered on his face. A and what about my brother, he asked. The expression on the man's face darkened. Your brother, he said, he is, how do I put this, deemed unfit for employment? Klaus's body turned cold. What? He knew the answer, but he didn't want to hear it. Not from him, not from the government. Why? The man looked away uncomfortably. We'll look through your medical records, and of course, and we'll, uh, <clears throat> under the Big Daddy's orders, any persons afflicted with incurable mental conditions such as Asperger's syndrome, Klaus grit his teeth, ought to be disconnected from society and made sure to be isolated. It gave Klaus what was supposed to be a sympathetic look, but it was manufactured with only a gay, cold gaze lying behind it. I'm sorry, Herr Klaus. That's just the way it has to be. Cool! Social tension improves! Great! Oh, that's not good. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Anything else down here? Nope, not yet. Alright, anything up here? Economic reforms? Here we go. Stagnating? Nice. Don't mind the, the collapse of the regime right now. Please do not mind it. We have 120 days left, so, so we're okay. Social justice. Every society is as perfect as its lowest rung. Both Speer and Oberlander know this, and the latter has a solution. It is not enough for the state to bring only welfare to them. They must be uplifted to a higher strata, a sense of living that the people can take joy from. Even the poorest man within the right cannot only buy a loaf of bread a day. He must be able to support his entire family, a comfortably eat that. Massive investment in propaganda campaigns will roll through every city, towns, and village. Even if it comes at the expense of the budget, the world will know of the purity of the NSDAP's benevolence, while simultaneously broadcasting the inhumanities and imperfections of corrupt liberalistic dogma. As long as you can reset the regime stability thing, I mean, we'll be okay, so. It really doesn't matter to me too much. Um... Yeah, we're at 29.7%. We got 100 days left. The model society. Oh, that's true. We don't get the one done as fast as possible. Uh, social justice. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Oh, we're not going to be good at done. Honestly, I have no idea what this does. What the heck does this do? The wheels turn. Like, we can't get through everything here fast enough with this with this thing here. So, yeah, I'm not really sure. Social status. Um, honestly, I don't know what's going to happen. Let's, let's do everything here. Why not? To curtail public meetings? Why not? Social tension is going to get worse anyway, so. Send in the tanks? Yeah. Catastrophic? Not bad. Not bad. Now we're strongly conservative. Look at that. Wow. Cool. And then Caesar's due. The Zollverein, now and forever, exists solely as a tool to supply the German economy and the German needs and the German people. The East is its conquest, its industries, and the plunder, its labor, the lasting reward to bring about bountiful riches back to the homeland. Though many consider the drive to the East as successful, Oberlander merely sees it have taken upon a new form. What remains of the pitiful Slavs toiling will work, toil harder to serve the Reich's needs, for it takes precedence all above all else. Even if we must drag every rebellious Slav back to where they belong, be it with whip or bullet. Full circle. Oh, crap. Um, I think I've read this one before. 
But, let me read about this one. The adrenaline and doubt rushing through her limbs and chest made Amelia incredibly excited, even amidst the mass of people of her fellow protesters facing off a much better equipped police force with military backup following shortly afterwards. She heard from a friend of hers that martial law had been instituted, but like heck that would stop her. Not only had she been fighting against the government for years now, but recently she was inducted into a new seemingly fledgling movement called the Reichsbanner Schwarz-Rot Gold, waving the old tricolor that had been so commonly associated with democracy now snuffed up under the Nazi dictatorship. With a deep breath, Amelia reached under her coat and grabbed a bottle stuffed with alcohol and rope, and a ladder followed alongside with it. The cacophony of noise surrounding her as police both pushed and retreated back and gave her enough of to cover to light the Zadon of cocktail and let the flames burn against the wind before a hefty chuck threw it straight into the center of the police barricade. The moment the bottle struck it, a great ball of fire erupted, and everything only went downwards into further chaos. Amelia subconsciously gr grinded her teeth together from stress for a moment before opening her mouth and letting out a rally and credit her people behind her. The peace police would be too busy being distracted, and she at least gave them the best show of resistance possible when the military hadn't arrived yet. As she did, her eyes could spot rifles from the back being trained towards her and her protesters, and she could only sharp force a sharp, surprising intake of breath. Reports say police used rubber bullets, resulting in 54 injuries and one young woman even ending up in critical condition. It's fun here in Germany. It's a lot of fun. But hey, we can invest in synthetic oil. And that's what matters, my friends. Hey, 56% uh, stability's not bad, actually. That's nah, not looking good, but hey, whatever. We'll get there. You know what? We can we can always do this one as well. Um, it's probably a really bad idea. Let's do that. Because I want to get more national social support first. We'll go do this when we need more regime stability. And this will help us bypass that for now. It's fine. I don't really care. Propaganda? Why not? Because we can. Because we can. Kaiser's, Kaiser's, Caesar's dues. Will you forgive me somehow? Klaus was on the edge for the past five days. Ever since he got that job, ever since that faceless bureaucrat had given him something dreadful to process. The policy of isolating those mentally distanced from normal people. Something along those lines, the words disturbed him to his core. Did he not re-enlist under Speer's army in the Civil War? To fight for a future where his brother would be free to live? What had happened to that? As he returned home from a cold, listless evening, any hopes that his family would be left under the radar were dashed as a storm of shouts, curses, and tugs emerged from the front door of his family's house. They had arrived. They were taking his brother away. As his pace stepped, turns into a messy running, and his anxiety burned into anger. The three men who surrounded and pulled at his brother turned into nothing but targets for Klaus to get rid of. He knew exactly what would happen if they took him. Let him go, let him go! Antony screamed, catching the thugs off guard, though his brother did not take the opportunity to run. Only looked towards him with a frightened expression as these three continued to drag him from home. Klaus scowled and kept running, not content to let them get away. As he got close, his body of an older man still managed to raise a fist and swung, but he was slow, rusty since the war had ended, and so he hit th only thin air, for the cry of Anton was the last thing Klaus heard before he dropped to the floor, and when he awoke, he last thing, the last he ever saw of his brother. Oh, the impact of social stability, or social tension on weekly stability decays. Okay, cool. Employ Ostarbeiter? Yes! Yes! Um, I don't know much about Asperger's Syndrome, like, yeah, I really don't know much about it, but, but it's, like, if you want, I want to, I, I don't even know if it's considered a mental illness or anything like that, but, like, it doesn't sound really, I, want, I don't want to say it sounds really bad, but it's, it could be, I won't say worse, but, you know, I don't know, I just don't know enough about it to make any serious comment here, so, I don't know, it is what it is, it's part of the story, I guess, we'll say, put it like that, I don't want to land myself in any trouble, for now, I mean, swastikas are cool on thumbnail, stuff like, mental illnesses or anything like that. Let's not talk about that. Kraft durch Freude. Even now, as we begin to reopen and reinvest into the facilities that bridge the gaps between the classes while the Reich mended the world of Aryan society and began its transformation. A leisure camps meant for anyone of any class to experience the ideal, what everyone deserved, the voices of a rebellion continue to bite at our ankles like rabid dogs. This is an unacceptable proposition, and the demands they've given us completely impossible and incompatible with pure national socialism, so we must intensify our efforts to calm them down, and there is an easy solution if they continue to disobey. Days of Harvest, you want, uh, what? Victor asked Paleface as he looked at what was seemingly a roving band of German mercenaries, armed with pistols and shotguns more than ready to cause chaos. The man in front of him gave him a glare, speaking in broken Russian. All of it. Do not understand, idiot. Take most of your money and half of the food. Leave the rest to you. His grand widen. We'll recover, yes? If we do that, that's going to start a famine, Victor replied, keeping one hand near the knob of his door. He had a gun in his room and half a mind to use it in case things went south, but when he saw the man reach for the pistol, his heart stopped and his eyes widened. I do not care. Give what we need. Money, food. The cocking of the pistol made Victor's body flinch. Waiting? No waiting? Go, go. Speer grimaced as he rubbed his temple with two fingers, carefully looking over the report again and again. Violence in Germany's eastern territories, in cases of it sprouting mainly in administrative areas. He had a feeling that ever since he conce conceded uh, to the Zulverein, few funneling vast amounts of currency and materials back into Germany, Oberlander would need 
or would all be too eager to strike a dagger into wherever non Aryans lived. And judging from the cases he read, Obalanda's goons were succeeding inefficiently and needlessly antagonizing the native populace, but it worked, even if some ended with violence and death. A part of him felt like this cycle he saw occurring was all too familiar to him. He never held sympathy for any of the non Aryan people living within Germany's influence, true, but this was simply ridiculous. Listening a groan and aside together, Speer pushed away the paper and got up from his chair. There was work to be done, unless Oberlander continued to have other ideas. Wow, the French state loses a lot of stability. Our friends in America. Oh, I've not read this one before. If the Reich has an ally in the Judeo-liberal hellscape that is America, it is glorious leader, Francis Parker Yaki and his American national vanguard. They seem to have recognized the superiority of European blood while denouncing the very sort of tolerance and liberalism that we now has weakened, know has weakened the U.S. of A. at its very core. Indeed, it would suit us very well if the American National Vanguard was to become a force to be reckoned with, as such, such agents of the Reich made contact with the party at their headquarters in Hillsborough. While Mr. Yaki was not present himself, we were able to meet with several high-ranking party managers and campaign officials within his organization and strike deals between the Reich and the Vanguardists. It seems further pursuit of this relationship will be nothing but mutually beneficial. In exchange for a little more than continuing their already pro-German policy, we will provide the American National Vanguard with what they crave the most of all. Funds. With this, Yaki's men promised us they will be able to compete on the same level that the Republicans and Democrats do, flooding the airwaves with pol political ads. May Germany be in safe hands. Best of luck to him. Unter dem Zimmer. America's home to many of the degenerative vices, and communism is no exception. Although not numerous, the communist elements within the National Progressive Party hold, withhold considerable authority amongst America's poor and miserable, capable to rally their base at first call. Whether or not they can obtain the reins of power in America, their influence must be suppressed. For all their faults, Americans have little love for the communist dictatorship, and they will surely be the responsive towards our efforts to discredit the largest bastion of Bolshevism in America. And this is what I wanted to do as well. Oh, no, 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 wait, no this is not the one we wanted to do, because this will remove national social support, which is okay, but we don't want to lose any more regime stability for now. Because we're going to lose it anyways up here. Because once this is gone, it's going to really hurt us. So it's going to go down probably by 10%. Yeah. 46% is pretty nice. And... Now it's... Not there yet. Oh, propaganda campaign ended. No. Oh. Good. And now it's at 29%. So it was down only by 10%, so it's not too bad. It's alright. And a strong people. Though we have taken significant action to turn around public view, many still remain adamant on going against us. The swastika now, more than ever, flies draped across the red and white banner of wherever the eye can see, but just as commonly do people slash and burn them. This disastrous display cannot be shown, and the people must believe that these anti-government anarchists and bandits are nothing more than a Jewish-funded mob of dissidents and non aryans propped up by the declining West. They will be shown all day and night that the Reich is eternal, from the past to the present to the future, towards all of the future. Good. German people will outlast this crisis. There you go. And we're good. What a speech. Fine with us. I was just spending more money on the, on the guys anyway, so. Uh, nothing there yet. Uh, bribe political enemies, that's fine. Slight corruption. Okay, we have military factors, that's fine. Um, Honestly, like, I don't, like, I almost never use this, but I will use this for, like, stuff to hear. A 6.9% is not bad. Revolving closing doors. By the time Speer was done reading the preamble, he simply closed a document and let it down on his desk. The fool Oberlander and his gang only stood chaos in Germany. He'd give them nigh unlimited access, funding and perhaps a little too much overreach. Yet they made nothing out of it. As much as he hated Schmidt's burning need to push for reforms and demands that were too progressive than he would ever like them, it was better to at least deal with someone who did not constantly speak with undertones of vain ambition and idiotic dogma. Not only did Schmidt feel out of the picture, so did the rest of the gang. He did not talk to Erhard nor trust school, often as so recent. And Kiesinger's role had been subsidized mainly in favor of meeting with Oberlander who practically observed or served as the figurehead of the NSDAP swelling hardline faction. Day by day, Spiel felt like he wanted to do less and less with the man and more with the gang than he had left behind. But then, the scenario had presented an opportunity. With the failure of the gang's liberalization efforts, and Oberlander being an incompetent example of what national socialism ought to be, now would be the perfect time to pull the rug for under both and finally make a stand for himself. With public discontent rapidly rising, Speer knew he was capable of turning the tide and pulling the strings to simply twist what people perceived was at fault. A sly smile came over his face. Those that take the fall will be the ones who deserve it the most. Nice. A strong people. German people will outlast this crisis. Um, ah, oh, yes. Distribute propaganda, we'll do that one later. Um, we'll improve. Let's give it just a little bit more time. I want this to get back to zero first. And it should pop up soon. Yeah, come back up. We're good. Nice. Yes. 
And yes. 9.3%. The economy's coming back. We still have... Okay, we actually increased the amount of slaves we have here. Holy crap. A strong people and, and, and only potty after we get some better planes, of course. The pathetic, pathetic stain known as democracy continues to fester like a tumor in the darkness, aided by the Judeo-Bolshevik uh, menace, or the capitalist scum working in tandem with the Judeo-Bolshevik menace. They must be reminded of the new world order that has been established by us. Our victory, by all means, not for a second could any rational person imagine a democratic Germany triumphing over Europe. The only fate it would have, then, would be to butcher, be butchered by its neighbors, torn it to pieces, and cast into irrelevance forever. No. It's the Fuhrer and the party that has gotten us here, and nothing, never anything else. Those who think otherwise must be silenced and will be. Conservatives significantly benefit. We will crack down on dissident parties. Oh, yes. Crack that whip. Crack those batons. Other expen Wow, that is a very specific number we have for other expenditures. Interesting. The wheels are turning. We can't get rid of that one. There we go. Volksville. National Socialism's most universal tenet is that it follows the will of the people, as it has from the very beginning of the creation up until now. Yet, even with all of our efforts, as we broadcast footage from the golden era that Germany experienced under National Socialism, so many continue to regard us as a failed government. This economic crisis has exposed us to a true, painful truth, that the people are not in one. The people ask for National Socialism, and yet they clamor for efficient or inefficient fascism, corrupt liberalism, and many more ideologies. The will of the people lies shattered. How do we put the pieces back together in time? Um, I think I've read this one before as well. So, if you want to read about this, please go ahead. Cool. And the Shah of Iran has been gone. Goodbye, Shah of Iran. Hope you, uh, had a nice life. You didn't go out very nicely, though. Just saying, man. Maybe next time. Spy versus spy. Um, I believe I read this one before, so... If the man's ego will be his downfall, the game's on. I'm not sure what this does, so... Oh, the spy and spy thing, yeah. I mean, there's nothing you can do about trying to get that one done as fast as possible. Unless you cheat. The, uh, game is on. Yes, I've read this one before you went about that, please go right ahead. The squabbles of children. Um... Clear them out. I believe I've read this one as well. Yeah. I've read this one as well, so you want to do this, please go right ahead. The wheels turn. I mean, there's literally nothing you can do unless you cheat. Like, these are all 21 day focus, except for this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And you're only 200 days to do it, so. And these are 21 days, so you're guaranteed to lose. So, the madness of men. The Reich is dying. Um. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to do this, please go right ahead. Basically, being betrayed by the gang or whatever. Which is weird, because we were talking about, like, the gang. is like, we didn't really talk to them that much at this point. And only party in Volksvilla. Painted black. As all of Germany watched with the cameras rolling. Yeah. Ah, cool. The Iranian Civil War. Nice. Yeah, 13%. That's not great. <laughs> I don't think it's going to last very much longer, though, so. Yeah, no, I can do that. Oh, here. You can do this stuff. That's fine. There you go. There you go. Uh, we can have them as much as we possibly can right now, maybe. Um, there you go. Nice. The Iranian Civil War. How many guys can we send over here? 60. Not bad. Not bad. Now, this, this war is not easy to do. It's really not easy. From the German side, so. A place of hatred's birth. Um, oh. Ooh. Have I read this one before? Yeah, I think I have. So we want to do that. Please go ahead. And the screams of the burning party members of the then. Yeah. Cities on flames. Cool. Time to refocus. Riots in Germany. Yes, yes, yes. Advanced cannon stabilization. Very nice. Very nice. Um. There you go. You can do that one. You can do that one too. I don't really care. Despair reactionary is not going to work us work out for us right now. 
Even if we took vast political promises, we'd still lose this, so. I'll go about that. Actually, no, let me read about this one. Despite the detestable liberalism of the U.S., they have but one factor in their favor. They have not fallen to the forces of Bolshevism. The far-left faction of the National Progressive Party, led by Gus Hall, desires to change that. This is something that naturally can, we cannot allow to, to occur. No matter how much we detest the Jewish puppets of America, Bolshevism would shed the last veneer of non-Jewry from the country has. As a result, our operatives have taken it upon themselves to show the hypocrisy of the American left. We have thus released records proving that several left and NPP officials have been using their campaign funds for personal use, and are in fact quite wealthy themselves. Accusations of tax evasion and hoarding of wealth will surely turn their supporters off. We expect most of the former LNMP or LNPP voters will change to the center. Social democracy is nonetheless a disgusting ideology, but one with a slightly more palatable taste to the people of the Reich, after all. Is it not worth promoting a pension or two by keeping class struggle from embroiling America? I hope Yaki wins. Growing and growing. Um, I've read this one before, so you want to that, but go ahead. Yeah, things are getting bad. Things are getting really bad here. That's all right. If they're not bad, then what's the point of doing them? Want to name an Axon. Yes. Just waiting for another one here, too. Ah, uh, come on, boys. Let's go home. And hey, what's next? I want to see what's next. I forget. When I did this one, was there something else after this? And we're still going to do that one, but we'll probably save that for the next episode, which will probably be the last one in this campaign. I'm I'm knowing... I know too much about Shapiro's campaign now. <laughs> now, once Toolbox Theory comes out, if it ever comes out, I will be... Hopefully... All up in that stuff. Because I've been waiting for months. The time I've been waiting for so long for Toolbox here to come out. I really wanted to come on out. Uh, if you go here, you can actually probably cut these guys off very quickly. The opening page. Uh, ooh. Well. I I'm sorry I don't follow you. Helmut Schmidt leaned against the booth wall, not fully understanding what he was hearing. You're saying there's a rebellion on? I'm not saying there's a rebellion. There is a rebellion. They're all over the place. The diplomat's voice crackled over the radio, the rattle of rifle fire occasionally making its way into the receiver. The fire was rapid, fast, and seemingly close. Helmut shifted as the mental picture began to form in his head. So it's another slave rebellion. Well, crap. Do what we did with the last one, he muttered into the phone, a hint of confusion mixing into his normal stately tone. No, Helmut, you don't understand. This isn't some slave revolt. The whole bad word city's up in arms. They've got Reichsbanner flags. They're chanting Reichsbanner. A shot of excitement fired up in Schmidt's spine, quickly followed by fear. It was all simultaneously good, very good and very bad. Crap, are you sure? We can't put this down. They've got guns, ammo. I think they've stolen a few tanks. Oh, crap. The screeching of metal faintly pulsing through the receiver, quickly accompanied by the roaring of an angry crowd. Oh, bad word, I've got to go. We're evacuating. Volshaw's lost. Repeat. Volshaw's lost. The line went dead with a slam. How much stood in disbelief, still glued to the phone. Finally, after a moment of silence, he dropped the receiver and rushed to the train station. This was going to be big. Oh, boy. Things are collapsing, and we like it when they collapse sometimes. Sometimes, not all the time. Take the victory points from them. Let's, uh, let's see. Yeah, we wonder about this, please go ahead. This is starting the, the descent in, of madness. Snowballing. There you go. A collapsing tunnel. The process of separating himself from both the gang and Oberlander was put into motion. Whereupon the time would come with Dimitri Speer declaring himself as a rifle and intervener in the madness trailing after the liberalistic elements of the NSDAP and their failure policy of the crisis, and against the hardliners for indulging in delusions of grandeur. Had Speer been given enough time, such a plan would have worked in his mind, and yet... The poor glared at him with a seething sense of betrayal in his words. It was accompanied by word of mouth, too, and a trip to the outside of the Vauxhall was all but confirmed for it confirmed it for him. Oberlund had not only failed cat catastrophically, in fact, to deal with the situation at hand, but also had made it worse. So much worse that, in fact, public discontent turned towards a most alien solution. Democracy, with the shackles of the NSDAP's hardliner clique now put on him. Speer knew that he would be pulled into his riptide of insanity from both purist national socialists and a large segment of the population, now swelling rapidly, demanding a complete revolution of the government. Anger pulsed through him not just as much just as much as Speer did, for Speer would have had Obalanda hanged if not for the crisis ravaging the political stability and economy of the nation, throwing the legitimacy of national socialism into the dirt. Now he was stuck between two impossible scenarios, neither of which Speer wanted to deal with, but in some way, somehow, he had to, else Germany would fall victim, either to degenerate capitalist democracy or the self-destructive tendencies that followed his country decades ago and led it to ruin. May Germany find itself in safe hands, Speer's hands. Good. 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 God, I love these things. Gaining steam. Um, yeah. We're going to build up as we're We're just getting started. 14%, not very good. But we'll do the best we can, you know. Getting up to reforms really hurt us here, but whatever. Um, Economic status, yes. Oh, wait. Oh, it's collapsing again. That's oh, not good. Economic reforms, sure. Hey, yeah, merge stability, why not? Or, I lowered it for a little bit. That's fine. Hey, 12% is not bad, though. 
Everything's collapsing, but we're still doing okay on money, so... I'm not really sure what to say about that. Oh, you're still in zero. The past repeats. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I remember this one. Alright then. Let's start with the bang. Yes, if you want to read about that, let's go ahead. Bing, bong, boom. Are you guys going anywhere? Yes, you are. Nowhere is safe. Time to start over. Yes. Oh my gosh. Go on retreat. Tidal wave, okay? Ah, oh, look at this. Now, let me see this. The, the Fries Europa one. Um, yeah, before we go to war with those guys, if we actually do it, go into war, I gotta take something here first. Oh, good. We can actually go in there together. Utter failure. Uh, in this very room so long ago, Oberlin had sworn to keep Spear in check. That was a thought that had kept running through his head as men around him yelled and shouted at one another, each much more eager to shoot down the proposals of his enemy than make any contributions of his own. The president, usually one of the most boisterous voices in the Reichstag, watched quietly as the Reich's foss of a government bickered over what to do. Speer had loosened the reins and they'd slipped from his hands, the slaves were revolting just as dozens of party officials had expected. Speer, Kissinger, Schmidt, they'd given the own to mention the rope by which to hang the German nation. If they were to survive, if they were to continue, someone would have to do something. Someone yelled for silence and there was a clamor to the dissenting voices of the Reichstag, eventually simmering down into silence. When all eyes turned to him and no one spoke, Oberlander realized that they were all expecting the, the president to address the assembly. Faced with the results of the Speer's recklessness and searching for a solution, the Reichstag was looking to Oberlander. All of Germany was looking to uh, Oberlander. Should still be able to win here, because we should have a lot of planes, right? Or helicopters. Now we should do even more damage here, which should be really good. Can you actually go in there too? Nice, nice. Slaves to control of central Poland, so be it, whatever. Oh, nice. So, Falls Muscovine. Cool. Do we have to go to war with one of these guys first? Or what's going to happen? I forget. I think everything's going to fall apart first, so it's fine. Whatever. Happens. You know, happens. Huh. Short and control. When it rains, it pulls. Slaves control Galicia. Our empire is crumbling for now. The party's champion, the Reich Saviors. Slaves over on Estonia. Alright, this is madness. Absolute madness. There you go, there you go. Cool, anything up here? Yes. Propaganda, because why not? We love propaganda. Go, truckies, go! Billers overrun by slaves. And Helmut Schmidt and his friends will be shot. Yes. Nice, we overrun a group. That's actually really good. Give them a few days, give more organization, and there you go. Good enough. Arak. Central Ukraine. Which makes sense. Cool. They're not that strong here. Go in. Oh, I'm going to tell you guys to go in here, too. Nice. Oh, you actually overran them. Wow. It's kind of impressive, I'm not going to lie. And the Caucasus. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, Anything else here? Synthetic oil. Yes, please. We can do that, but now. Nah. Okay, we still got some time here. Because we're, we're out of focuses now. We're done with focuses. So we'll see what happens. Five divisions. That's so many. Let him spread out. Downfall. Come out, come out, so I can kill you, Schmidt. Definitely remember that. Mercenary sees Baku. Alright, so let's take a look here, because this is going to be a massive group that we got to take out. Uh, I'm not sure these guys are going to stay with us, but maybe they maybe they won't. Because right now, we're going to do this too. You guys go in here as well. Um, do this. Next. There you go. And actually, we're going to edit this. I don't want... That's really deep into there. I just want to focus on our own territory. So this way it makes it much more concentrated. So that'd be good. We'll be free forevermore. Thank you. 
Ooh, new decisions of focuses. So as over on northeastern Ukraine, so be it. And thank you. Friends. Uh, friends, friends. Very cool. Slave Revolt and the Reich. This is a disaster. Slave Revolt. Freedom beckons. Alright, the sword has fallen. Very, very nice. Uh, I think I've read this one before, so if you want to read this, please go ahead. And there it goes as well. Cool. Restoring trust. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. Boom. Nice, nice, nice. I'm ready to get rid of them. This is interesting. See what's going to happen. Oh, we could go down there. We could cut, cut these guys off, maybe, but still. And I'm glad we're done doing the east, uh, the military stuff. Good. Um, let's spend more. Why not? Screw it. Gotten land abandoned. Oh, that's not good. Have I read that one before? Uh, I think not. The German government's hoped that the Dnieper would be the final border of the slave revolt proved to be hollow as the uprising reached even more heavily German as Gotenland. Despite the garrison's effort and hundreds of militiamen joined the fight, in the end they were too overwhelmed by the sheer number of enemies emerging from the fields, houses, and forests. Now, the region sees a massive exodus of German settlers fleeing towards Crimea, the last bastion of the Reich in all of Eastern Europe apart from the faraway Muscovy. Local authorities have declared a state of emerg uh, dis desperate emergency and drawn the line at the isthmus of Perikop. The Kriegsmarine patrols the coast and forests, and the naval command of Theodoric Stadt has deployed elite marine detachments at key locations in the city. All guns and rifles are ready to open fire upon anyone foolish enough to threaten their home base, armed or not. While Crimea is safe for now, nothing can hide that German power in the east has been all but crumbled. We, what do we do now? Restore trust? Social agitation? Uh, do we negotiate? No. Send in the Orpol. Contact Volgestadt? Schoenis intervention launches. His intervention. As we speak, Schoen is preparing to crush a slave rebellion in the east with military force. Unless we intervene, the resulting bloodbath will inspire countless more. Send the R and D. Convoy landing preparations. Grant emergency funding. Why not? Hold speeches. Um, if I have to, we would do vast political forms because we're probably actually going to need to do that for here on out. Bug political enemies would be good. I'm gonna give that too. Yeah, I don't know if we'll actually be, get, be able to get that one done. That's so bad. I mean, why did it have to go all up to reformist? Uh, negotiate with students. Regime stability goes down. Now we're okay. Um, I think right now, oof. Yeah, we got a lot more to do. So extend the olive branch. Clear the trenches. Yeah. Yeah, we might as well do that one. Those who can discuss the grievances with us in a peaceful and civil manner are not the issue. Even the people who gather peacefully are not the root of our problems. It is a loudmouth. Those rabble rousers who preach an immediate radical change and those who vandalize and riot. They are the issue. We need to make a list, check it twice, and round up the most vocal and violent of these protesters so we can have a return to normalcy. But unfortunately, I've got to end the episode here. I've got to go on and do some other stuff for today. But tomorrow will be the end of this part of the route just to see what will happen between us and the slaves and, uh, well, Lucilin. But if you enjoyed the video, Leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we will figure out what we're going to do with everyone to the east of us. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.